Today on The Garage Engineer, we turn this old karaoke machine into the new shop radio. So a few videos ago, we purchased the cheapest car stereo I could find that had Bluetooth and installed it into the shop truck. Well, I've been using it for a couple months and I really uh, enjoyed it. It really turns on quickly. Uh, it connects to your uh, dev phone or Bluetooth device. That leads me to what I found a couple years ago was this old karaoke machine. Uh, it didn't work. It looked like the some of the items were gutted, and uh, but the speakers are still good. So I thought maybe we can combine the speakers with the car radio. So I thought about installing this sideways and putting this on top and then building an enclosure around it. But I thought that might be a little too awkward with it sticking out of the device. Then I was thinking about, well, if we keep it standing up, then maybe we could put it on top. But then again, you still have to build a box. But then I was taking some measurements and figured it fits close right under the handle. But we're going to have to cut out some plastic. But it's just uh, the handle and it's not structural. So I think it'll be a good place for it. So we need to get this bracket that holds the radio to fit inside here. So we got our area nicely cut out. We just take our bracket. It should slide right in. There you go. And then we've got the tabs. Uh, this side, since we didn't do cut this out, uh, we don't have. We can't bend the tabs in. But on this side, we can. We're not uh, going to use all of the wires. The yellow is the main power. You hook up to your 12 volts. Uh, the red is if you have an ignition switch and this needs to sense some power uh, like you're turning on since we don't have a switch we're just going to hot wire that together with the power and then based on these colors are going to be your uh, how your speaker is hooked up also I saw there these cheap little tweeters that were uh, like seven bucks I just wanted to test it out just kind of see what it sounds uh, sounds like and I think these we will hook that up to the uh, rear wires. So we have this uh, electrical board. This was what was on the back of the uh, karaoke machine. I want to salvage some of these parts if we can, the, like the 12 volt uh, barrel plug and the two adapters for the speaker wires. I could hot wire the wires in, but they've still got their connectors on them and I want to see if I could try to reuse the uh, other end of the connectors on the board and hook up some wires to the back of that just so if we ever need to take it apart it would be easy to uh, separate. So we're going to try and desolder some of these parts off. So I don't have a hot air desoldering station so what we're going to do is take a little bit of flux. This is just regular flux paste and we're going to put it on the pads that we want to remove. Now I do have some desoldering uh, solder wick. All this is is just copper that's been uh, woven together. So we'll give that a try. So now I just heat it up. Put some of this desolder wick on here. And then it just becomes just a wiggling job heating it up. This three points of contact which kind of sometimes makes it harder since I can't set, pull this all up. I do have a desolder bulb. Maybe we'll try that. What I'm pulling off is the 12 volt barrel. So we're going to use a uh, 12 volt plug from I guess it came from like a, some type of household electronics that we're repurposing. It puts out 12 volts, probably from a router I had. Alright, let's see here. Let's see if this thing will move. 
we didn't kill it and melt it. Oh, it's hot. Let's see here. Let me see if I desolder bulb will work. So I've also got a desoldering bulb, which all is, is just it just sucks up the solder when you heat it up. So we'll give that a shot. So heat it up, squeeze it, heat it up. I haven't been very successful with this. I need to get one of those pumps. Try a little bit more. What what we also might want to do is take some soldering solder and re-solder it and I'll heat it up a little bit there you go alright let's get a little closer I'll show you what's going on so what it first did is we'll put some fresh solder on here and that just gets the temperature up of the old solder. Okay, then we use the soldering bowl. We just suck it out. I burn the board, but we don't really care about that. So we're gonna do that again on the last one here. Let's see how that works. Getting close. I feel it wiggling. So we'll repeat this process. I'll bring it back when we get a little bit closer. There we go. When they have three pins like that, it makes it a little more difficult to get out. When there's only two of them, you can wiggle it out. Three is a little bit more difficult, but we got it. So let's also get these other pins, um, these connectors for the speakers. So these pins are only two. I mean, these uh, connectors are only two pins, so it started to move. kind of wiggle it. It's coming. I don't know if you can see. I'm kind of wiggling it as I'm heating up, going back and forth, heating the two. Oh, and I just broke the, uh, well, we can fix that. Gotta get the pins out, but they are hot. And I need some pliers. Well, here's, as we're going to pull it out. I'll heat it up. It's almost out. It's right there. Here's one. There's two. All right. It's just some pins that stick into the plastic. And the plastic's just kind of a locking mechanism to hold the two sets of wires together. So I'm going to pull the other one out. So right now I'm working on all the components and I'm taking, uh, adding wires to them so I can extend the lead so when we connect everything up to the radio they can uh, all reach. I did want to show this is the DC plug and I always forget which one's positive, which one's negative. So what you can do is if you forget or don't know what an equipment's, uh, which way it goes, you can look on the plug. If you see right there at the bottom, there's that little symbol right there where you've got the positive sign going into the center of the circle. And then you got a negative going on the outside of the circle. Well, that's telling you on the barrel connector which is negative and which is positive. So the same thing on the inside of the barrel connector. You've got the post in the middle, that's going to be your positive. And then you got the, the pressure uh, 
tang on the uh, inside. I don't know if you can see there on the bottom, that silver piece on the bottom. That's going to be your negative. And then if you're not sure which of these three, uh, I think one is just to hold so it doesn't bend, um, just for structure. But if you don't know which one goes to which, you can use uh, your multimeter and to test. Um, but also this uh, tab goes to the center, and that's the center post there. So that leaves the bottom going to the negative, which is on the bottom of the uh, barrel connector. And you can always test for continuity too, is put your multimeter plug on one part and then connect it to the post and then it will show you if you got continuity and if you've got continuity then you know that the circuit will flow through there so right now we're just gonna I'm gonna add some leads to the uh, ends here now here's another little tip that I made um, I just took a piece of uh, I think this is a 12 gauge wire house wire put two alligator clips on here and this is what I use as my helping hand when I'm in the field somewhere um, and I need something to hold so let's see here. So I'll hold it like that with one. And then you always take the wire. What we'll do is we're going to take the uh, the red's going to be the for the power. This tab has a hole in it. So I'm going to stick the wire through the hole just so it has a little bit better connection. And then we're going to uh, solder it together. There you go. And I usually on the help at hand just have the wire hold it in there and it kind of holds it in place that way I can use one hand to hold my solder and the other hand to hold the soldering gun and then I don't have to worry about pushing putting pressure on the wire trying to hold it to the connector there we go just glove it on there I don't have enough uh, small enough heat shrink that will fit on this wire so what I'm going to do is show you another, something else that I like is uh, this liquid electrical tape. It works pretty good, especially in areas that you can't get hit uh, heat shrink onto. Like if you're working on a car or something and can't get the end of the wire. Or uh, since this doesn't matter what size the wire is, we're just going to put a little dab, right? Ooh, whoa, that's a lot dripping on me. I'm just gonna put a little bit. That's just so it doesn't connect, keeps them from sh and shorten out. I like to put this to protect it. And there you go. I'll just continue that with the uh, negative post and then I'll bring it back. So we cut a hole into a, the back of our case so that we can run the wires from our radio through it, which I'll do now. I'm going to go ahead and clip this in. There you go. Awesome. We're going to check to make sure our wires will fit through the hole that we drilled in the top of the speaker box. And it does. So the next step is we're going to uh, connect the wires that we use to extend the speakers up through that hole and we'll connect everything before we screw it down in here and then we will also uh, add our plug uh, where we're going to do a power uh, connected to probably somewhere in the back while we're on the front of the case let's go ahead and install the tweeters at least the placement and to see what kind of wiring it's got uh, we might have to extend these wires too into the back of the speaker We've got the mounting plate for the back of the tweeter, so we're going to stick those right up here at the top. Just get a screw right there in the center. Now what we need to do is just drill some holes in the bottom here so we can run the wires uh, through the case. This wire is long enough, I think, to run through here. We might need to extend this side uh, a little bit longer so it reaches, but uh, this side's good. Some of you asked uh, what type of wire I like to use. I just found this on Amazon. It's just a uh, six-pack of wire, different colors. 
that uh, which comes in handy if you need if you run an electronics project that has you need to keep the wiring separate but for this project we just need the white and black and that's what we'll use to extend the tweeter wires all right so I've connected my extension wire onto the tweeter wire and we'll just heat that up and get some solder on it and then I'll put a heat shrink on here this wire is a little bit thicker perfect alright here's one let's get the ground on here So I like to hold it on for about three seconds, the soldering iron on the wire for about three seconds, it heats it up. And then you add the solder to it. You want to make sure the wires are warm enough to accept the solder or you'll get a cold joint. Perfect. We'll just add our other piece of heat shrink this tweeter will be done. So now we can just send the wires through. And I'll pull it through from the back. Snap the tweeter in here. There you go. And now the wire should run up through the top. You can see right here. I'm get my hands twisted the right way. There you go. All right, perfect. That's long enough. I want to do a little bit of wiring on the uh, radio first. Uh, normally, this red wire goes to your ignition switch and it's fused. But uh, what you're going to need to do for it to be used is you got to connect the power, the yellow power, and the red. But if you put the the line to the power before the fuse then you the uh, you could still if there's a power surge you could still short it out uh, through this red wire so I'm going to connect this wire after the fuse uh, that way we'll have the protection of the fuse on both lines and this wire is only needed to uh, give sense to the radio so that it knows to, when to power on so since we're not having a switch on here, uh, it's just going to be always on. And not like a car. But this is needed. If you don't do this, then the radio won't work at all. So let's see, maybe we can pop it out. There you go. Pop it out of the case. You see that right here. There we go. We're going to wrap the red wire around the yellow wires fuse like that and I'll put a little bit of solder to solder it on and then we'll connect here's the DC uh, barrel and I'll connect the red wire to the yellow and I'll give it power and then the uh, black wire is the negative and we'll connect that to the negative wire so we're at the point of our program we're gonna start buttoning this up um, I wanted to show you I reused the plate that was uh, on the original karaoke machine just took out the board all I did was CA glued the uh, DC power barrel connector and then we're gonna screw that in and then we'll turn our attention to the wiring here now I went ahead and uh, connected all the wires. Let me get you a little closer in. So basically, I ran all the wires, the power wires, the speaker wires, up through our hole and connected it to the uh, car radio. So the only thing we have left is to get an AM/FM uh, radio stations on here. Is we need an antenna. Basically, antenna is just a wire, and all you really need is a copper wire. This is a ho household electrical wire, uh, 12 gauge and you just stick it into the antenna uh, port and that's all you need to get AM FM radio so I'm gonna button this up and then let's plug it in
Now we just plug up the power cord into the barrel connector. We'll turn this around here. Hook up power. Push the power button on. I have to make some adjustment on that antenna. We got Bluetooth. Let's hook it up. pretty fun project. I like trying to use uh, old electronics and to reconfigure it. Uh, I've been surprised about our $16 uh, car radio. I found another use for it um, and it works pretty well. So now we got a shop radio that we can easily stream from our phone. We can have uh, play a lot of good music. And remember the ABC's of making? Always be creating. Till next time.